Welcome back to American Beef Ranch. Today we're chasing cows that don't belong to us. Great day in the neighborhood. Anyway, thanks for stopping in. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, get down there in that description. Make sure you check all the links out. I'm gonna chase this dumb cow. Uh, so frustrating, so frustrating. So I just finished chasing that cow. It probably took an hour of my life to chase that cow around. I got her in. Still can't find her calf, which I don't know. We'll have to look for it more later. Uh, I got fence to fix, but while I was up there in this whole conundrum of them dropping off lease cows, oh, so people dropped off lease cows. What I mean by lease cows is they lease pasture from us. They drop their cows off. They stay here for so long, and then they come pick them up. Anyway, uh, it's pretty common in this part of the world. Uh, when they dropped those off, a couple cows went looking for their calves. They got out, ran down the road. It was a wreck. Well, then they also walked by my bulls. Then my bulls broke out of their pen, followed them into the pasture. So now my bulls are in the pasture. So while I was down there, uh, our mature, grass-efficient Red Angus bull was down there. Or, or, you know, a bull that you would use to create more efficient cattle on grass, smaller framed, things like that. He's down there. And he was standing next to a commercial bull that's probably either Simmental or Angus Simmental cross, something like that. But one thing I want you to notice, if you look at these uh, video reels, the grass efficient bull versus the commercial bull, you'll see that the commercial bull's got a lot more leg. There's a lot more distance between his uh, belly and the ground. And I don't know if he's mature or not, but he's, I mean, he's a big bull. You can tell, and you can see his bone structure is really big. He has a lot of bone in him. And in body wise, there's not as much body. You look at the grass efficient bull, he's got shorter legs, more body, more width, he's more filled out. And that bull has only ever been fed grass and hay. No grain, nothing ever. Um, and he, you can tell he's just got so much more body on him for so, for a lot less feed. So that the same, those two bulls both lived about the same lives, short grass pastures, uh, hay in the winter as needed. So, and you can see that 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 red angus bull that is made for grass that is you know bred to be a grass bull is a lot better looking he, he is he's a better looking bull and, and it's unfortunate the commercial market has gone that way of you know just get the biggest animal frame we can and slaughter it because that's what they sell they sell pounds they don't sell quality they don't sell anything like that they just sell pounds they the rest of it is hoofla but um, I, this is a good comparison to show that grass efficient cattle aren't necessarily smaller. Now, yes, they're going to weigh less. And typically, like I said, they have a shorter frame, but that doesn't mean they're going to be small. That bull is by no means small. I mean, he is not a small bull. He is full, thick and wide. I think that's one thing you'll notice about grass efficient cattle. They're shorter, but they're very wide. So now I got to go find, there's more cows I got to go chase and, and do more things. And then, you know, we're ranching today. So st stay tuned. Okay, so I still got cow problems. There's still a cow without a calf. We're missing a really small baby calf. Uh, the owners are headed here to try to help figure out, you know, because I'm running around doing stuff. And it, Yes, I have a responsibility to watch after the cows, but at the end of the day, like, it's still the owner's responsibility to, like, do most of the care. Like, I'm just here to, like, make sure they have grass and water. Um, if we have issues, I let them know they come fix it. But I've got issues of my own right now. Okay, we're at our big pivot. You can see our in gun is stuck. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if it's just stuck. Sometimes stuff just gets caught up in it and gets stuck. Also, we have that bird plugged. There's two birds back there plugged. Um, that bird's plugged, and then we got like three that are important. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to fixing on this, and I'm gonna let you guys watch and. I don't think I mentioned, but it's only 60 degrees today and it's windy and so it's gonna be cold if I get wet and I, I, I'm gonna get wet, which is uh, unfortunate, but here we go.
sometimes you just have to give up and get wet. I'm giving up. I'm wet. And there's there's stuff stuck in the end of the bird. Not the nozzle, but the, the flapper deal. The impact part. And so, yeah, it's not working. Ah, I gotta go fix fence now. So join me for that. And don't get me wrong, I love cows. I want my own, a lot of them. But, others people cow, other other people's cows are about the most frustrating thing in the entire world. They just no. So, a little backstory. Out here in this desert, I had I went on vacation, went to Florida, uh, where my wife's from. We were gone for ten days. We had, well, my wife had fifty-five head of cows out here in this same pasture of about a hundred and twenty acres. Uh, plenty of grass for them for, you know, how long we were gone? Ten days. Okay. We got home, we knew these cows were coming, so we moved them back to another pasture that's regrown. And we saved this pasture and what grass was left for these cows to, you know, get here, get settled in, know where the water is, have enough feed to feed them for about a week, and then pair up with their calves so then we could move them to another pasture. Well, total disrespect. Destroyed this fence, jumping out, running around, not pairing up with their calves. And you could say, well, Jesse, you should have had a pin for them to pair up in. And I, you know, I'd agree with that. You, you know, having a pin for them to put them in so we could get them to pair up would have been smarter and that should have been the route, but I didn't. So unfortunately you just gotta do what you gotta do. And this time they, I mean, they destroyed the fence. So it's okay, we're gonna tighten it up. We're gonna get it back into decent shape. We're gonna put another post up there in that gap cause it's a big gap and I know they're gonna go through there next. Tighten this fence up. That way next time this fence is more prepared. Okay, so and the reason you see this is four wire fence. Uh, the reason it's that way is because it's government spec fence. And uh, a while ago, there was a big fire that came through here, burned all this, and the government paid like to replace a lot of the fence, which is a good thing, but the fence was built to their specifications and their specifications on fence due to antelope are ridiculous. And there's no antelope anywhere getting caught in any fence built like this or not built like this. But anyway, it, makes it a really weak fence in the end. Like the posts are really far apart uh, and there's only four wires and cows just, they can go right over it through, they, which they can do to most fence anyway, but they're more adapt, apt to go through this fence. Anyway, we're gonna tighten her up, fix her up and get her reattached where it's not attached, add another post up there, make it a better fence. So let's get to it. So I guess while I'm stretching wire, we can discuss some of this. So there's a couple reasons in my mind why Idaho, like I said, BLM fence is not really a good thing. First off, I don't know why, but Idaho doesn't spec high tensile barbed wire. So we just use standard, you know, like low carbon, which the problem with regular low carbon wire is it stretches. So this is a relatively short run of fence. And just the cows going through this fence, it, it was tight when it was built. And now we're gonna take probably at least a foot of slack out of this fence. Just from, you know, 
the stretch that's in the wire. So, I mean, it's unfortunate because if you were to, if Idaho was to spec high tensile wire and we were to use high tensile wire, I didn't know about high tensile before this, right? I didn't, but this was built when I was a freshman in high school, eighth grader maybe. But if we were to use high tensile wire, you don't get the stretch. High tensile is more, it doesn't have a stretch. It's not even like a spring, it, but it's, it's got tensile in it. So you pull it taut. And even with the, the heat and the contraction and expansion of the wire, it still stays tight. And it has some resilience, like a cow can run into it, but it can push right back off and it snaps right back where it should be and it'll be tight. Um, so you could imagine, we just pulled about a foot out of this fence and this fence is, this fence is probably a hundred foot long and we just pulled a foot out of it. So you can imagine you have a full quarter mile section of barbed wire fence with this low carbon wire in it, man, it, it can have, feet and feet and feet of stretch. I mean, you can sit there with the fence stretcher with a strong guy or gal and stretch the fence for a long time and try to get as much stretch out of you can of it. And that's the other part. It'll stretch and stretch and stretch and then finally it gives up and snaps. So then what are you left with? A broken fence. So if you're building barbed wire fence, really you should consider using uh, high tensile wire and close, close posts and also something that I don't think they didn't spec in the fence, but they should is steel, like drill pipes, drill stem posts every, you know, 70 to hundred feet. Cause the, the T post, and I've seen it in other spots out here where the ground's soft and there's a lot of weed pressure from the, and then the wind blows. The fence likes to push over cause the T posts literally are just stakes. Basically they're, they, they're not there to hold the fence up. So that's something else you probably should keep in mind. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna keep tightening this fence up. There's a, man, there's a lot of slack in some of this. Pull as much slack as I can out. And I mean, this is a lot better now. Pull as much slack out of this as I can, put it back on the posts. And, and I think I'm gonna have a lot better fence when I'm done here until it stretches again. <laughs> Just the way it is. All right. Fence is looking a lot better. Another thing, I, another tip, these things, these twisties slash uh, fence stays, if you have somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, they just ram and jam and put those in there. And it, it's not that hard to put them in, but people make it a lot more difficult than it is. Anyway, the fence is tight now. It's taller now, more posts in it now. I think we're gonna be better now. Uh, but the owner of the calf just showed up. He's right there, I don't see him. We're gonna, I'm gonna run down here and see if I can help him find this cow that we think is missing the calf. She was right here a minute ago. So let's run down here, and see if we can find her. Cause I think she's right there. So I was right, this cow is right here. And he's gonna let that, I don't know if you can see, his truck and trailer's right there. He's letting this calf out. And see, here comes this cow, she's looking hard. Here comes a calf. I don't know if you guys can see the calf running across right there. See, they think they got a couple of mistag calves, which makes sense. This is a green tag, and the other the cow is supposed to have an orange tag. The cow's looking. The cow's looking, but not getting very close. Get over there, mama.
Mom is following it, but the calf doesn't want nothing to do with it. Now the calf's following the mom. Mom's circling. Calf's trying to nurse. And we've decided that is that cow's cat. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long day, but uh, we got some work done. Got some rock picked out here. You can see I got three trails started in this edge picked up. I'm just gonna run back and forth till I get all the rock picked out. Unfortunately, I don't have the skid steer with the rock bucket anymore. I had to return it. Uh, and then it just didn't make sense to rent it for another month with how the hay ended up and things like that. You know, just it wasn't worth spending the extra money. But we're making progress. We're gonna have about six to eight more acres on this pivot, which is I I, I can't tell you how amazing that is. We between this field here and that other field that we did uh, a couple weeks ago before we left on vacation, you know, we're going to add 15, 14 or 15, 12, 12 to 15 acres. And that's, that's amazing that, you know, that, that'll really help a bottom line. And then, you know, we got more opportunity in this property to continue to do the same thing. And then obviously adding more irrigation equipment and things like that in other spots. So there's a lot of opportunity for improvement and room for improvement. We're just going to keep working at it keep kicking butt until, you know, we can't do it no more. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't, you should comment, like, check out the links in the description, subscribe, uh, come back more. Uh, you know, our goal here is to raise the best grass fed and finished beef and propel regenerative agriculture as far as we can. <clears throat> it's getting chilly. I'm going to go change a pivot and go shower and go to bed. We'll see you guys next time.